In this video, we'll be talking about the shake reduction filter. It's a filter that analyzes the trajectory of a camera shake and helps it restore sharpness to otherwise unusable images. So I have an image here that you can see has some shake blur that was captured while I took this image. And this is an image of a waterfall in Julia Pfeiffer Burns State Park in Big Sur, California. And it would be a better image if the camera hadn't shook when the picture was taken. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this new filter to try to salvage this image. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a smart object out of this uh, layer here. Now keep in mind, you don't have to use a smart object to use this filter, but I prefer to do so. So I work non-destructively and I recommend you do the same. After you convert the image into a smart object, go into filter sharpen shake reduction okay and in this new window you'll see the shake reduction options panel and make sure that you turn on advanced just so you can see the same thing I'm seeing if uh, if you don't see the square here is because you have the advanced option disabled so turn that on the first option in the blur tray settings is the blur trace bounds which specifies the size of the blur trace boundaries works very well at 30 pixels you can play around with it and change it if you want to it might make a difference in your image but I found with the images that I've worked on 30 pixels works okay and for source noise uh, auto seems to work pretty well for me at least with the images I've tried so far smoothing if you bring it all the way to the left the images will get much sharper and I'll zoom in so you can see the images get sharper, but it creates more noise. If I move smoothing all the way to the right, the images get much, much smoother, but you lose a lot of detail. So you have to find a balance between uh, the smoothing. So, you know, somewhere about 30% about or so seems to work fine, at least for this image. And same thing goes for artifact suppression. You have to find the right balance between the image and see how the artifacts are going to get suppressed in the image. So for example, if I, if I bring it here, there's some artifacts you can see here. If I want to get rid of those, I might go too far, but then the image becomes blurry again. So again, you have to find the balance for that. I moved these around a bit. I'm just going to hold Alt on my keyboard to change the cancel button into a reset button. That's Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac. I'm going to click on Reset just to reset my settings to default sense. The default settings were actually uh, pretty good for my particular image. I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out. Now, th this estimation region box here, you can click and drag it around. Place it in the point of interest of your image. So in this case, I would like the waterfall to be the point of interest, and you can make this bigger if you want to. That way, the thing that's most important in the image to you is where the data is being gathered to fix the blur. So I'm choosing the waterfall. If, there were, if this were a picture where you had maybe people, maybe you had a face here and another face here, you can create a new region just simply by clicking and dragging on another side of the image. And you can see how now we have two estimation regions and you can create more if you want to. So maybe I want to have these trees up here and be another point of interest. So I can have these two. And what that does is it just helps Photoshop know what are the important areas of the image to try to get the best results in, in those specific areas. Also, these are the masks that show the blur trace. Essentially, that's how my uh, hand was moving when I took the image. So if I click on the expand blur uh, trace icon here, you can see that this is the motion that my hand was doing as the image was taken. And actually, is the same here. For this particular image, I really don't need two of these. So I'm just going to delete uh, one. I just wanted to show you that feature in case it was useful for your image. The only thing left to do in this image is maybe zoom in a bit so we could see some better details and maybe work on, on the smoothing a bit, maybe bring it uh, down a bit to get a, a little bit more of a sharper image. Press P on your keyboard to turn off the preview and you can see the before and after. So that's before and this is after. I'll zoom in a bit more so you can get a better sense of, of what it's actually doing in this area here. So again, pressing P is the same thing as clicking on this checkbox here. So I'm going to press P, so that's after, and this is before. So as you can see, the image is very blurry, and you can kind of see the motion that my hand had when the image was taken. If I press P once again, you'll see that everything sort of gets uh, snapped back into place, and the image looks much, much sharper. 
So this tool is pretty amazing. You can really salvage some images that otherwise would be unusable. When you're done, press OK. And the changes will be will obviously be applied to your image. And since we applied a smart filter, we can always come back, double click on the word shake reduction to bring the options again and make changes if need be. I'm going to press cancel on that. You can also double click on this icon here which will allow you to change the opacity and blending mode of the filter. So maybe you just want to uh, apply the same effect to it but maybe reduce the opacity so the, the filter is not so sharp. You can do that if you want to. You can also apply the filter as a blending mode if you'd like. One other thing I want to show you is with the shake reduction tool you can set the blur direction manually by using this tool. So you can just click and drag on this tool to set the angle of the blur trace direction. I find it a little hard to use. This estimation region is enabled so I'm just going to uncheck it just so the only data that it's gathering is from this image here. I'm going to click on preview or you can press P so we can see what that does. So as you can see you can click and drag to see the trace direction. You can also click and drag closer to the other point to change the trace length. And as you can see, this is a little bit harder to use in the auto feature. So I wouldn't recommend using it just because it's really difficult to use. But you can create a great effect with this tool. Maybe you're going for some weird effect with your image. Maybe it'll be useful for that. But as far as reducing the camera shake, I really wouldn't recommend it unless you really know the angle and the length of your shake, which most people don't and I don't see why you would. So I, I wouldn't use it, but feel free to use it if you like. So I'm just going to use a regular auto uh, motion detection. So I'm just going to delete this estimation region.